Good morning. Welcome back to another hot, humid, partly cloudy day here in eastern North Carolina. We did have a little rain last night, which was kind of good, but I don't know if we're going to get more. We might get more, but it's not enough for the garden. The garden really needs, actually the whole area needs a good couple inches of rain. We haven't had a good solid rain in probably over a month. Uh, we've had little I think the most we've had is maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch in the past you know, month. That's not really a lot. And it's a little odd for this time of year, but okay, Sarah, the I can walk around and hand water a lot of things. The farmers though, they're really hurting. Their uh, corn, the corn is growing, the beans are growing, everything that's grown locally is growing. It could just use some rain, it really could. Uh, no plant likes to grow in uh, dry soil, but anyways. I'm standing here in front of a brand new birdies bed that I built recently. My wife purchased two. I still have to build the second one. And uh, this one's all filled up and ready to go. And what my wife wants to do is she wants to plant uh, flowers for cutting into this bed and probably another one which will go right over here. Then hopefully maybe in the future we'll put one right here. Or maybe we'll put the new one over here. Either way, uh, we're going to get these beds uh, put into place here. They're going to be used for cutting. So she'll plant um, whatever she's got. I think she's got some uh, small sunflowers and uh, various other flowering plants. I can't remember. She told me the other day and I can't remember. I am sorry. If I do remember, I'll maybe throw something below. Uh, but yeah, so that's not the point of today's video though. Today I'm going to try something new, something I've never done before. A bit of an experiment. And it came to my attention due to... Gar uh, from me watching Gardener's World. And Monty Don, the host there, he was talking about uh, possibly starting up a seed bed and he had gotten the idea from somebody else. Now the whole premise of a seed bed is, is that you could take a bed, it could be an in-ground bed, it could be a raised bed like this, it could be a slow raised bed. I'm gonna actually use a raised bed out in the garden. I'll show you that in a second. But the whole premise of the whole idea is, is that you're planting out plants to grow without using, let's say, a lot of plastic pots uh, or a lot of plastic trays. Uh, and then you could grow on your plants and it would almost be like a nursery bed. You would grow the plants into that area for a period of time. Once they're large enough to go into the landscape, you then move them out into the landscape. Sort of similar to, again, growing and starting seeds in a seedling tray or pots and then planting them out, except you're not using all that plastic. I'm not 100% sure, but I kind of feel this is the way it was done way back in the day. Monty even made a comment um, that uh, that's the way I think his parents had done it. Because again, not a lot of plastic way back in the day. You know, I'm caught talking 40, 50, 60 years ago, 100 years ago, 200. How did the Victorians do it, right? And so that's eco-friendly in a sense. And yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not just doing it for the whole eco-friendly thing. I have a bunch of seeds but the, and to grow, but the seed house is getting, the seed house, woo! The greenhouse is getting too hot, way too hot. I have stuff in there I'm trying to get out in the garden now to get out of the greenhouse because I'm pretty sure by the end of this month, we're in June now, by the end of the month, definitely into July and definitely throughout August, that greenhouse is gonna be well over 120 degrees every single day when the sun is out, even with the shade cloth on it. Uh, it's just that hot, and again, the glass amplifies that heat. Hindsight being 2020, I definitely probably would have put more ventilation in the greenhouse, and heaven forbid if a hurricane blows this greenhouse down and I have the funds to replace it, uh, I would definitely add in more ventilation into this greenhouse. Uh, probably another side vent, so I'd have two side vents uh, and definitely probably two more roof vents. Uh, to, again, allow the greenhouse to breathe more, to allow more air in and out. You know, I have the front door open all the time now, and I have the side vent, obviously. It's on a piston that opens with the heat, and it basically stays open all the time now, because even at night, it doesn't cool down below really 70. So I think it pretty much stays open all the time, and the roof vents stay open all the time. And again, it does allow for some ventilation, um, but it's not enough to keep it to a reasonable temp, I, I would call 80 degrees a reasonable daytime temperature, but it's not even doing that a lot of the times, especially as the air, as everything gets hotter and the sun gets stronger. I'm gonna try something new. Uh, again, this is a bit of an experiment. I'm gonna start seeds in a raised bed, and then uh, I will cover that raised bed with shade cloth. And you know what? I'm just gonna stop talking and show you what I'm talking about. So here's the bed, and it has that one broken corner, which you can see that's just the way the wood came last year. But of course the wood is 
due to the heat and the humidity down here and the moisture, the beds, even though it's made out of cedar, is starting to rot. All the beds are starting to rot, uh, some faster than others. This, this one's going particularly kind of quick. I may be able to get another year or two out of it. I can't top it off with that much soil again because of the one broken corner. And could I replace that board? Sure. Is it worth it? Probably not, especially when I want to go to all birdies beds uh, over the course of time. But this bed is deep enough that I can put seedlings into it and then let them mature into young plants, whatever comes up. You can see the four stakes on the corners. And that's what I'm going to be hanging the uh, shade cloth on. And that's so that the seedlings, once they start coming up, they don't get burned or they don't get uh, overpowered by the sun. Again, we're into June. These things will be uh, flourishing into July. They'll be basically coming up in early July. And why, why roast the plant? So if I put them under a shade cloth, it should keep a majority of them relatively coolish or again, keep that bright, bright broiling sun off of them and then let them again mature. Once they get bigger and stronger plants, they get deeper roots. I can then take the shade cloth off. They'll start to uh, you know, thrive and then maybe they'll be big enough and large enough to plant out into the early fall into wherever the whatever flower bed I decide to plant them out on. So let me show you what I'm planting out today. You see now it's getting cloudy again. A moment ago it was sunny. I don't know. But the seeds that I picked today are some that I intended to start growing out this year. Others that have just been sitting in the flower box forever. And I've already made up the plant tags for all of these. So I'm basically going to stick these in the ground. No special order. Gonna dr I'm going to do holes, drills, drills, is that what you call them? Lines. And I will seed them out. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Some of these may grow. None of these may grow. Again, this is an experiment. If this works and I do get fairly successful germination and I do get some plants out of these, bonus, especially then I don't have to, I've already spent the money on the seeds, then I don't spend money on plants and I can plant those plants out into the flower garden. And like I said, maybe early fall, depending upon how fast these grow. A lot of these are, I think all of these are perennial. So if they do die back, they would come back, that kind of thing. But like I said, this is an experiment. I'm gonna see what happens. So the first one I have is a Larkspur Smoky Eyes. Uh, this one is from Floret Flowers. Uh, you can see that there. And it's a Larkspur. It's kind of old, uh, honestly. I think it was, oh, packed for 2020. There you go, it's two years old. I don't know if, the, again, if any of these seeds are gonna come up, they may, they may all come up. They, maybe one out of 20 may come up, who knows? But uh, it's better than just sitting on the box collecting uh, dust, Let's see what happens. The next one is Dahlia Redskin Mix. Now I started growing Dahlia Redskin Mix. It's a basically a small Dahlia. They come in um, yellows, reds, that kind of thing. It's sort of a mix. Uh, but I started growing them in the early spring and my Dahlia, they, did, they didn't do well for me in the pots and stuff that I had them in. Maybe I had them in the greenhouse too long and they just got cooked. I don't know, but I'm gonna try throwing them in the bed and what could be the harm? Uh, again, if they don't grow, they don't grow. If they grow, they grow. Lupine Russell Mix. Uh, this is a brand new one I purchased for this year. I just haven't gotten around to uh, starting to grow them. Foxglove Excelsior Hybrid. Snapdragon Red Orchid. Orchid? Orchid. Snapdragon Red Orchid. It's a lovely pink. You can see that there. The camera will focus on it. Uh, again, we'll see. The other thing is, is that whatever I do plant into this bed, it may not take to being transplanted once it starts growing into an, into another bed. I, I don't know. Again, this is all an experiment. If you've done anything like this before, if you have any experience with this, please leave a comment below. I'm always open to suggestions, advice. I'm a growing gardener, hence the reason the, the channel is called Growing a Green Finger. Learning. <laughs> Rubeckia Perry, Prairie Sun. Oh, wow, I am having a problem. Words hard today. Rubeckia Prairie Sun. Uh, that'd be nice. And then the last one, which I think I've already tried to grow, and I've, again, I'm having, I'm bombing on, on this variety this year, Coreopsis Ruby Kiss. I uh, just haven't had much, I've tried growing other varieties of Coreopsis this year, not having much luck. So I'm gonna give this one a whirl. If it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, so let's just get to planting. Or the other thing I should mention from what I've researched briefly on seed beds is that you want the soil to be as fine and as loose as possible. Uh, you don't really want any big clumps. So if I do run across some big clumps, I might just break them up with my fingers like I'm doing now. 
and um, there is quite a lot of, um, there's old grass clippings in here, which are rotting down, which adds a lot of organic material. And I did add some black cow uh, compost to this to, again, give a little bit of extra fertilizer to the plant, uh, to the bed. Ugh, God. So first and foremost, let's try the uh, Coreopsis. There's about 150 seeds in this packet. Ooh, they are very fine. All right. So I'm going to do my best just to make a nice little drill, rill. What do you call these things when you make a line here? I'm sure there's a name for it. All right, that should be good. Uh, it says cover finely when done. There we go. And I think that's it. Cover this bad boy up. And we're gonna mark it. There we go. So that's done. Next one I think I'm gonna try is the Larkspur. Where's that Larkspur sign? Stick that label in. The next one is gonna be the Dahlia Redskins. Looks like next is the Lupine Russell mix. And I'm putting all these seeds, also FYI, uh, about uh, six to eight inches apart because I don't intend for the plants to grow to full maturity in this bed. Um, I would like them to grow to young plants. And then I would pull them out and they would go out and again into the flower garden someplace. Next one is gonna be Foxglow Hybrid Excelsior. These might be very fine seeds. Oh yeah, these are very fine. I think I'm just gonna do maybe a half row. So then on the other half of the row, I think we'll do, oh, we're almost out of seeds here. That's good. Uh, maybe the Rebecca. That just leaves then the snapdragons. These are also very fine. So maybe we'll just do another half row. Okay. Well, there you have it. That was the experiment. And my local hardware store, I think, has some old seeds for like 99 cents, which I may maybe go grab a few of those. And because I still have room in the bed, uh, in the nursery bed there. And if again, if I can get a handful of plants out of it, it's better than the seeds sitting in the box waiting till next spring. Uh, I'd rather get them in the ground and trying to produce. Of course, I have to water the bed. Even though we had rain last night, it wasn't a lot. And that top layer of soil is already pretty dry. Uh, what I probably will do in uh, probably the next week or so, the next time I mow the lawn, is I'll put down uh, some grass clippings, a fine layer, just to help uh, act as a mulch and retain the moisture. And again, as the grass clippings rot down, they then provide, um, I think it's like nitrogen to the soil. I'm not sure if you know, they, they provide some nutritional goodness. So if you know what it is, please leave a comment below. Uh, help me out here. Help out everybody who watches these videos. Thank you for all the new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Tell your friends, families, loved ones. Grumpy old guy across the street about this channel. Click that bell icon to be notified. In this way, you can keep up with uh, what's happening in that nursery bed. Did anything come up? Did nothing come up? Uh, did something come up and, I don't know, a storm came and wiped it all out? Who knows what'll happen here in the garden. Uh, as you can see, I have stuff growing around me. I'll probably do a, a little bit of a veg garden update in the next few weeks, let you know what's happening. And that's if the bugs don't all eat me to death here. <laughs> uh, please check out all the links below. And I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. I'm gonna catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>